Okay, let's try again. So sorry for anybody who was just on a minute ago. <laughs> I'm having a time. Um, I actually think I'm having phone problems. Anyway, I was going to do a whole research-based lesson today and share some new pages. The pages are not in the shop yet, so I'm not sharing them. And uh, I actually can't be on here for too long this morning, unfortunately. So we're going to do another family tree notebook tour because you guys actually liked the last one. And that's something that I can do and share um, relatively quickly. And then I'm afraid I have to go, but I will be back tomorrow. And then on Friday, I will be back. And Friday, I'm also having my Black Friday special. So I'm excited about that. So there should be an email that comes out tomorrow and the special will come out on Friday. That's the news. So anyway, we're going to look at my Chinese side of my family, my family tree notebook. I have a variety of notebooks because I have a different notebook for all of my parents, including um, my step parents and my in-laws. So this is not, I actually wrote this out and I thought, well, Chinese family tree notebook is almost weirdly misleading because there's nothing different about the format of the notebook. Um, someday I'll actually share some of the Chinese family records I have because they do look different. This is just, this happens to be the family tree notebook of my Chinese side of my family, not that it's written in Chinese or I printed it differently or something like that. So, and I'm going to have to do the thing that I do where I show you select parts in the beginning because I'm afraid of sharing personal information. But um, I went ahead and printed off the cover page that comes in good notes. Um, let's see, there's an index. I'm not gonna share that. Just skip on through. I don't have a ton of family members in the Chinese side of my family. Um, there's just limited research that you can do really unless you're very lucky uh, as a Chinese American, American born Chinese, because especially women, there's just not a lot of records. These are different formats of records that other family members have kept and that I have inherited. Um, those are some notes. Let's see, let's start with my grandmother. This is pictures from China camp of her this is where she grew up. Um, it's a notes page I'm gonna skip. This is a photo study of her as she got older. Um, this is her in the 1930 census. The copy of the census page and the 1940 census. Raise your hand if you're so excited about the 1950 census coming out, you know, relatively soon. Photo of her at school. I don't, I wish I had done more work during her life on her life. I was very eager to get all of the information she had about the you know generations before her. And now I, I know a lot of this stuff, but it's not written down. I, I kind of wish that I'd had a more complete chapter on her. This is my beautiful grandmother. This was published in um, Reader's Digest. It's her and her cousin. It's my Auntie Jet. She's still alive and still at China Camp if you're in the California area. This is my grandmother. Uh, when she was crowned the Queen of Chinatown. She's very pretty. So my grandmother, um, I won't get into it, but she's half Chinese and half Caucasian like I am. And I think the mix made her very uh, accessible as a Chinese woman. You know, her beauty made sense to everybody. So she was sort of, that was her thing, being beautiful when she was younger, which is fine. Um, this is her in a city directory. Let's see stuff about my mother and her sisters. And sorry, some of this stuff just has, it has birthdays and stuff that I don't want to share. Um, this is when they were in a John Wayne movie. And then this is my grandfather, my handsome grandfather who passed in 2011 and I miss him a lot. This is his parents. We immigrated from China, and that's got birth years, but that was him and his siblings. This is a lot of stuff on his siblings. I'm gonna skip this. They've passed, but I have information about their living children on the pages. Um, back to census pages. Let's see. 
Sorry, I hope that this is still enjoyable for you. It, the privacy thing makes it difficult. Um, my handsome grandfather graduating from high school. This is a yearbook page where I found him. He grew up in Oakland, so there were quite a few Chinese people there, but it, it's not like he grew up, you know, only knowing Chinese people, which is good because I think that that sort of changes. My grandmother also grew up knowing a lot of different people, and I feel like my grandparents were very, um, they never felt like they had to stay and be near all of the other Chinese people, if that makes sense. That might be a weird concept if you've never really thought about that, but imagine like high school lunch tables. They never felt like they had to sit with all the Chinese people, if that makes sense. Oh, more birth years. So sorry. Enjoy this view of my table. Um, my grandfather served in the Korean War. So I have, here's his draft card. And then articles about him being stationed in Japan. Um, military photos of him in Japan. And um, this was sort of just random. Oh, no, that was something that he won. Oh, it's not in here. There was a newspaper article that came out while he was stationed in Japan. I think it's back here, actually. Um, and it talks about how he's away serving. And it, yeah, this one. And how he was recently married and then he was stationed in Japan. And at the end of the article, it talks about how his wife, Bertha, resides it. And then it gives her full address after saying, yeah, he's not home. He's in Japan. And I thought, you know, if I had been my grandmother and she was all of 20 when they got married, I would have been really unhappy that the newspaper published my full address and said that my husband wasn't going to be home anytime soon. So, um, I need to put in more stuff. He was on the Napa city council for a long time. So I have a lot of political stuff for him again. Um, you know, I wish I had just completed more when they were still alive, but, um, avid bowlers, my grandparents, this is him on the committee to build the Covenant Presbyterian Church in Napa. This is them with my daughter. This is not long. This is March of 2011 and he passed in October. So, but he was able to know her for a little while. And then this is uh, my daughter's dressed as a tiger at his memorial because that's his Chinese sign and tigers were really important to him. Okay, moving on to my great grandmother. Um, Oh, I have no way of knowing what time it is, but I think I'm still okay. Sorry, I probably need to go a little bit faster. Um, my great-grandmother was a Caucasian woman who was brought up speaking only Chinese. <laughs> and I totally need to get into that story at some point, and I am now going to rush through it, even though she's arguably my most interesting ancestor. This is her foster mother, from whom she was forcibly removed by the court because it was considered inappropriate for a Chinese woman to be raising a Caucasian girl. And yes, that's a horrible, heartbreaking story. This is the newspaper article. There was actually all sorts of really shady stuff that happened about her adoption. She basically was placed for money by somebody who was lying about... Um, placing white children in um, Chinese homes. Yes, I definitely need to write a book about this. <laughs> I just haven't. Uh, and this is her at the Cameron House Orphanage being super not Chinese. This is Donaldina Cameron. This is the orphanage that she, where she spent, uh, where she lived from when she was 10 until she was 18. And she stayed in contact with a lot of the orphans. She, she you know, she didn't remember that as a sad time, but she was taken from her um, foster parents and she had to be placed in the Chinese orphanage because she didn't speak English because she had grown up in Chinatown with Chinese parents. So she grew up surrounded by Chinese people anyway. So yeah, it's just some ridiculousness. These are my great grandparents before they were married. They met while they were riding horses. Um, it's their, these are their children, which uh, only one is still alive, so this is their daughter that passed the uh, death information, birth information in her burial. She passed as an infant. My great aunt Mildred, a map of where they lived, a China camp. This is pictures from inside my great grandmother's home. It's boarded up now. Once my uh, grandmother's brother died, we lost access to her house, but it's still there. It's just a little shack at Chinatown. 
census. Um, this is when my great grandmother tried to shoot uh, my great grandfather again. I really should write that book at some point. Um, more papers and historical stuff about life at China Camp. This is her on the census. Um, this is she had a issue with drinking and driving. Um, she was in the newspaper a lot for keeping the shrimping industry alive in the area. And this is when they didn't know what was gonna happen to China Camp. This is before they turned it into a state park. But basically, they changed the water so that it would irrigate farms. This is her death stuff. And because the water left China Camp, all the shrimp died. So this is her husband, my great-grandfather. He was born in California. His parents were immigrants, but he was born in California. Pictures of him, his handsome brother. Um, census pages. Census pages. Um, interviews talking about him when he was alive. This is interviews that his son did. The China camp thing has been sort of studied. Um, this is when he was arrested for having slot machines at China camp even though they told him not to. So, not related to his wife trying to shoot him. Um, this is when they were trying to say that certain nets couldn't be used because it was a whole racist thing about Chinese people. Listed in city directories, and then this is him dying, 55. Um, this is my grandfather's mother, who was an immigrant. She was held in Angel Island for a while um, as part of her immigration process. She was incredibly young. She had known her husband all of two weeks before she made the journey with him and his family across, and then they were all held on Angel Island until they could prove that they really were married and that they weren't trying to sneak into the country illegally. Um, so their children again. Census information. Uh, the census image. Um, this is her petition for naturalization and some more notes. And then again, limited death stuff. Um, this is her husband. Unfortunately, I don't have a ton on him. He was a very handsome, kind person from all accounts. He was a vegetable peddler, basically a traveling grocer. I have his immigration stuff. Sadly, he suffered with um, depression and anxiety is what we would call it now. They just sort of thought he had a bad humor. This is his interview from Angel Island, talking about where he grew up in China and stuff like that. Um, anyway, when my grandfather was a very young man, he, um, when he was a teenager, my great-grandfather committed suicide inside their home. So he is not somebody that my mother knew growing up because he had passed away. Anyway, census papers. And I don't have information about his death. It's kind of a taboo subject in my family. This is my other great-great-grandmother. She is the one that I have on my wall. The immigrant from China. Very fierce woman. Um, her census information. Small but fierce, this one. And then... Those same interviews talking about her, memories of her from my great uncle as he was growing up. And then her death record, she is buried with her son who died of tuberculosis when he was not that old. This is her husband, the merchant who purchased her for his wife. He did very well. This is um, where he lived was flattened by the earthquake. I don't have pictures of where he lived, but this is Google image views of the street that he lived on um, up until the earthquake, basically. After the earthquake, they're not there anymore. Interviews talking about him, histories talking about him. He was the original store owner at China Camp, so he's mentioned more often. And then we get into ancestors where they exist in <clears throat> paperwork and interviews. They are named ancestors, you know, my great-great-grandparents on different sides. 
uh, this woman is actually, she immigrated. This is my great, great grandmother. She immigrated with the family, uh, with that bride that was young, like I mentioned. So I have photos of her. I have photos of her and her husband. Her husband was born in California, theoretically, and that's why he was able to bring his family over. We are not sure if he was actually born in California or if he's a paper son. A paper son, um, after the earthquake, there were a number of records that were destroyed in San Francisco. And at the time, because of the Chinese Exclusion Act, you couldn't come over here, here's your grave, you couldn't come over here unless you were, you had citizenship, unless you were born here. But all of the records were destroyed. <clears throat> so basically all you had to do is go to the courthouse and say, yeah, I had, I'm a citizen, but they destroyed my records. It's possible that that's what he did because theoretically he was born in San Juan. I mean, I, I actually think he really was born in San Juan, but it's just, it's hard to prove because again, the records were destroyed. So it's a combination of he was either a paper son or unfortunately he's one of the people who legitimately was here and his papers were destroyed. Um, this is somebody that my grandfather knew though. He outlived his son that committed suicide. His name is Song, Song Chu. And um, he was also theoretically a very kind man, but that's all from his immigration stuff or him helping his family immigrate. These are, um, this is information about people that he brought over, at least two of which actually were paper sons. People who had legitimate claims would bring over siblings, quote, quote, and children who were not necessarily actual children for sums of money. It was the only way to immigrate to America if you were Chinese. And it might seem like that's shady and illegal, which it was, but you have to remember, there was no other way for people to get here. And if you were from any other country, including the Asian countries, you could just come freely. But if you were Chinese, you couldn't. This is a handwritten document swearing that he was born in California. Um, and this is written by a white man in 1899. It's a testimony saying that he knows his father and that he knows that he was born in San Juan. So that's an interesting paper to have. Again, more paperwork about the fact that he was an American citizen. So, you know, that's 1899. The earthquake happens in 1906. For that reason, I, I actually th don't think that he was a paper son. Um, but I know that he at least a couple of times tried to bring over people from China who were not actually related to him as paper sons and paper daughters. So, but again, it was a way to make money. And also it was incredibly unfair that they wouldn't let Chinese people um, immigrate. These are the three people that he brought over. Uh, he tried to bring over these four people at once. Chu Aju got sent back. Um, Chua Fat, Chua Qin, and Chua Gui all were admitted as his children. Um, and so these are people who were brought in as family members, but they were not actually related to me. Um, and again, I have absolutely no qualms about that because it was an unfair law. And I hope that those people came and prospered and settled and have lots of Chinese descendants because, you know, that's the whole thing about America. Uh, census papers, I probably legitimately have to go pretty soon, but we're almost done. Uh, his death record, or his tombstone, and then his obituary. And then finally, this would be my great, great, great grandfather who was working as a shoemaker. Um, and this is more of that testimony, but he was working as a shoemaker in a mining camp in San Juan and had some children. That is the oldest Chinese relative that I have that was in California. So I hope that that was interesting. I'm afraid I have to go, but I will be back tomorrow and um, the new pages are coming. They're just not here yet. All right, you guys enjoy the rest of your day.